Frank, uh, thanks for the pictures. Thanks for reaching out in the comments and stuff. I'm glad uh, you've decided to take on this project uh, yourself. I think, yeah, you, you can definitely do it if you've got somebody with a uh, electrical background in the family that definitely helps. Um, uh, you know, installing it is not the tough part. That's probably the easiest part. The tricky part is sometimes just coming up with a good design. And so I'm glad you sent the pictures and hopefully I can help you a little bit with that. Um, if you want to send some more pictures, I'm not sure if you have some... Um, some bigger trees and stuff in the backyard that maybe you're thinking about some uh, down lighting on that um, you might be able to put those lights up in a tree and have them shine down. If not, I've got some good ideas for you. Also the in-ground lights. Um, I mean, unless you plan on putting them in an area uh, where there's some grass um, that you just don't want to have to maintain around the light and you want to be able to just mow over it. That's usually when I would use those in-ground lights. Um, anywhere where there's going to be lots of maintenance, you don't want them to get busted that's where I would use those otherwise uh, just cost wise and, and to save money the lights are going to do the same thing but an up light is going to do basically the same thing as that in ground light uh, when it comes to the effect uh, it's just cost and whether you want to have to maintain around it but um, what I would do in the back is I, I would keep this pretty simple I like um, kind of what you've done here with the landscape and I would just stick to some path lighting here I wouldn't worry too much um, on the side of the house I mean unless you have like a big corner lot here and um, there's lots of people driving by that you want to really highlight the side of the house here but I'm guessing the backyard looks like it's more just for you guys so that's where I would use just some subtle path lighting um, you know some path and garden lighting in here I think you know three or four lights is all you would need and it would just give it a nice calm glow and something that you guys could enjoy and then moving around to the front here um, because you guys have some of this lighting already what I would probably do um, I would probably just use again this is standard up and accent light um, and the way I would do it to kind of balance is I would try and get on both sides of these pillars not necessarily up the pillars um, because I think you have concrete here and that'd be tough to do but on the inside um, by the window here and highlighting really up to the top uh, as far as you can with this and I think with the standard um, 35 degree uh, bulb that comes with most of our accent lights will do a pretty good job and will easily get to that height because you don't have a lot of branches and stuff to compete with the light will easily get up there and then what I would do is I would probably have another up light and accent light here that kind of highlights up in this area as well uh, and then on this side because you have one here I would probably try and get one kind of uh, at the base of this window um, you don't want to have it too far out shining into the window nice and close to the house so you more you're just uh, glazing the the face of the front of the house here and then maybe another one on the other side of the window uh, just to have that balance so you have one two three and then you've got the two on the outside of this window I think that would be plenty the only other thing you could possibly consider if you wanted to get brave but it looks like it might be a little tricky um, doing a good job hiding the wire is if you wanted to gutter mount a light up here and light this part of the house um, if you're going around the back and it's easy enough to hide a wire this way that could be a cool way just to uh, kind of balance it because you're gonna have light here and then you would have a little bit of light on this front of the house and anywhere we're uh, we're working with houses that have you know nice brick um, and not just vinyl siding but nice brick siding like this I, I like to really show that off so I mean maybe five lights uh, up and accent lights back here you know three four path lights in the back and then if you have a couple other areas in the back like you mentioned that you want to use some um, up lights I would agree that the quality kit with eight um, eight up lights and uh, sorry eight up lights and four path or yeah sorry eight up lights and four path lights will do a really good job and it's probably a um, it's going to be probably the same cost as getting seven up lights and four path lights and another thing you can do too is if you go to our website uh, and you want to kind of try out some of these series um, you can get the try it before you buy it light it's really it's just our standard up light but you get it at a discount we ship it to you for free you can go and you can actually test out some of those areas uh, by connecting the wires of the um, of the light to a 9 volt battery and shining that light up uh, in some areas see what looks good see what you guys like before you go and even make that um, that big purchase for that big kit but I think that um, what you talked about is probably what you're looking at I think that quality kit will easily do um, what you're looking for here so hope that hopefully that helps if you have any more questions you know feel free to shoot me another email all right thanks so much Frank thanks again for watching guys as we show you how to easily install low voltage landscape lighting so there's 
various different lights you can look at. The most popular is easily the up light, accent light, or bullet light, often used to highlight different trees and, and features in your yard. Another very popular light is a wash light, often used to highlight the fronts of homes and beautiful stonework. Uh, path and garden lighting is also very popular to use to light walkways and garden areas and plant material down below as well as hardscape lighting which is used in different kinds of hardscapes as well as on fences and decks and can also create some cool effects and a great way to see what looks good is just to take a flashlight or, or any kind of light around at night shine it on a few of those features and really see what looks good and where you're going to position those lights i strongly recommend looking at led energy efficient bulbs for all of your landscape lighting it saves on power and it lasts a long long time you see they only use 40 watts 260 lumens is very bright and they still have that warm white or warm white look that you would find in an incandescent fixture and if you have an existing landscape lighting system that is incandescent it's very easy to retrofit with led bulbs again just to save power and not have to be changing bulbs all the time what we often recommend is go and find really good quality outdoor rated LED bulbs and then go find really good incandescent fixtures and just marry the two together and retrofit your incandescent fixtures with really good quality LED bulbs and it'll help bring the cost down rather than going and buying a fully integrated LED fixture uh, which looks good and lasts a long time but they do cost a lot more than doing this and just finding a really good fixture and retrofitting it with a really good bulb. So once you know where you're going to put your lights and you have your lights picked out, the next step is to start placing your lights. So when you've determined where they're going to go, start by digging just a small hole and just preliminarily placing your lights. I recommend using a rubber mallet so that you can really pound those ground stakes in and give them some good stability. Screw your light in afterwards so you can really get it in there. Make sure everything's level and then from there, you start laying out your wire once you got all your lights in place and be sure to leave extra wire at every fixture just to give yourself some wiggle room connecting the lights it's quite simple when you make your splice in your wire you'll have a wire going in and a wire going out for each connection as well as your fixture wire and at every light you're going to have two of those connections i recommend a good waterproof connection either a, a gel filled snap lock connector or these uh, gel filled DBRY connectors that come in two parts that you have a marette that screws on and keeps the wires tight and then it fills the wire fills into a gel filled tube that keeps the water out so just be sure to make sure you're getting good waterproof connections that keep the wires free of the elements as well as keep them from pulling apart the next step is selecting your transformer uh, very easy to do if you Look on any bulb that you purchase, it should give you the wattage, but if you have a 4.5 watt bulb and you have 10 of those, that's going to give you 45 watts, which means you want to select a transformer that's just slightly bigger than that. And I recommend trying to find a transformer that has a photo cell as well as a timer built into it for easy use. Uh, very easy to wire in your transformer. Depending on the transformer you have, it's generally going to have a common tap and a 12 volt tap. You just put one wire into each tap screw them down tight mount your transformer close to your gfci receptacle so that you can get power plug it in turn it on and go and make sure all your lights work before you start burying any wire so once you've checked all your lights and everything works you can start burying them one thing i would recommend is looking at the weon outdoor wi-fi switch is a great tool if you want to make your landscape lighting system totally smart and wi-fi operated uh, to bury the wires, very easy with a flat-ended shovel, creating a trench that's six to eight inches deep, spreading the turf open and pushing that wire down and stomping it down within no time at all. It looks like you haven't even been there. And in the mulch, it's just a matter of pulling it back and creating a, a path to lay down that wire, stapling it down and burying everything over that. So hopefully that helped. And if you have any questions, by all means, you can always reach out to us and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching that video. I hope you guys got some great ideas for your own do-it-yourself landscape lighting projects. If you want your own free consultation video, like I said before, email me your pictures at cal at lightingdoctor.ca or go and visit us at lightingdoctor.ca and be sure to check out our Try It Before You Buy a Light. Again, 
where you get one premium grade fixture and a King Innovation Instalite battery operated demo kit that you can go and test those lights out on your property before you make any big purchases. So I hope to see you guys again soon. And again, go get your free consultations by emailing your pictures or visit us at lightingdoctor.ca. Thanks so much for watching.